Hopefully that's synced. So this isn't what I had planned for this week. And it also isn't what I had planned for my game. But it's been a year since this has come out on Steam now. And I wanted to have a patch out for last week, but I've not been doing great recently for various reasons. Mostly just, I can't hear, which I've been over in a few places, but it like really puts you off doing anything. <laughs> um, so I didn't manage to get everything done that I wanted to. And then the video I was supposed to be doing for this week didn't like finish either. So I figured it actually make sense if I did something on my game. So what I'm going to do is like, think of it like a director's commentary sort of thing. I'm going to play the game. I'm playing it in the editor rather than like the standalone release on Steam. So that means afterwards, after I've played through the game, I'm going to go into the editor and show you a little bit of some stuff. Like, I'm not going to like go and show you all the code and stuff, but I'm going to show you some like things that are around that I think might be interesting. There's also not going to be a ton of editing to this, just so I can keep the gameplay in line with the audio. So I'll cut out any bits where I like cough really loud or anything, but otherwise there might be some weird pauses and stuff like that. One thing I am going to do is turn the audio all the way down so you can hear me and turn the captions on. And that way you'll still see when a noise happens, but you won't hear it because you'll just be listening to me talk. So, first things, we'll start on the menu screen. If you wait here long enough, there is actually a chance at all times that in, I think it's the right hand corner, the right hand side of the screen, the monster will just appear for like a second, just because I thought it was funny. This is also actually a copy of the bedroom. It's not the house, it's just the bedroom on its own in a little area, so I can do different stuff to this than I could to the main game, so the light in here is a little bit different, stuff like that. Just because it was a little bit easier for making the menu work. Right, so we'll start playing the game now. So this was actually the first time I ever learned, like this was how I learned to make cutscenes, which is why it's not the fanciest thing. But I was like, the this entire <clears throat> okay. Apparently, turning the sound off didn't work. <laughs> Don't know why. Should have done. Um, it used to work, and it is somehow broken. All right. Anyway, um, God, that's annoying. Um, anyway, the idea of this was that I was going to spend <clears throat> some time learning how to do a load of stuff. All of this was, like, completely on my own. Yeah. God, sure. up. So, like, everything in the game I made myself. The voice acting is me. All the models, all the... <clears throat> like texture assets, everything like that. That was all stuff I made. The only thing that's in this game that I didn't make is the font. <laughs> so I'm actually not super happy with the hand. I think it's really big, but I also wanted it to be, I wanted it to be really obvious when you're looking at something. So you can actually open all of these wardrobes. And then these are actually bookcases, it's just so dark in here you can't really tell. But you can open all of this stuff. Basically anything with a handle like this you can open. There's nothing inside any of them. I had some ideas for what I might do, but I never did any of it. There's little... I think that's a plug socket down there that I put in in the last update. And then if you try and use the bed before you've got your water... I should go get a drink first. It tells you to go and do the thing. These textures are all really squished, because I'm not the best at doing textures. <laughs> so this one is static, but the ones in the other areas, like this, where it says E, that's because the interact button on a keyboard and mouse is E. If you're on a controller, that'll update to show you why it is on a controller. I think it's the right trigger. 
I've actually forgotten now. Something like that. It might be X. Yeah, it's X. But also, these will update in real time. So if I switched to using a controller, it would start working. It would show those prompts. And then if I stay on the keyboard, or I switch back to a keyboard, it will go back to this. <clears throat> so all of these drawers you can open, and it's totally pointless. And if you stand on them, you can, like, walk up into the ceiling. Which is just a thing I never fixed. <laughs> if you look out there, there's a little shed. There is, like, a full garden. It's just so dark you can't see it. This was one of the newest things I added, which is the, <clears throat> like, physics interactables that lets you, like, throw stuff around. <clears throat> You're supposed to be able to throw stuff around. I can't seem to get it working. You definitely could throw stuff around previously. It might be how I do... I made some changes because it started clipping through objects. So it might be due to that that you can't do that anymore. <clears throat> so this door is open when you come out of the bedroom. The bedroom door starts open and this door starts open. The idea of that is that you're supposed to look at it and want to walk in. And then there's a trigger on the floor about where I'm stood now. And when you walk past that, it closes the door behind you. And then here tells you how to interact with things. And you can't leave the room without interacting with it. That was the idea, at least. On the other side of this wall, if you've beaten the game already, you'll know at the end there's a monster. And that monster is always there. He's like right on the other side of the wall. <laughs> and he's there forever. Until you hit the trigger, which is right here. At the very end of the thing. So the idea was that you'd walk up and see him come towards you. Which I'll show you at the end anyway. This room. The hope is, is that this teaches you how to interact. So then you see something already closed and immediately want to interact. And then you go in. And then you look at this one. No one understands this, apparently. I thought it was really obvious. In a game where the main character keeps making noises. That if you press Q, it'll stop making noises. Yeah. Oh, I've still got the monsters up. <laughs> right, so if you hold Q, you actually move slower. And don't make noise while you're holding Q. But what it also does is sort of like, keep them charged. And then when you leave go, you'll almost always make a noise. Because essentially, if you would have made a noise while holding the button to not make a noise, it'll just <clears throat> make the noise eventually. I don't know why this keeps opening and closing. <clears throat> That's weird. It's not supposed to. Bathroom. This room is basically completely useless. <clears throat> there is essentially nothing special about this room whatsoever. What the fuck is up with the doors? Why do they keep opening? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> oh, I might know why. Might be to do with the light switches. <coughs> I made some changes. I'm going to have to look this up because I don't know why this has suddenly started happening. It never used to. <coughs> See, this is one of the issues is that this all used to work and now I'm trying to show it off and now all of it's broken. <coughs> so it looks like after I'm done, I'm going to have to go and try and fix all this because I have no idea why that's happening. <coughs> so here's a better place where you can see some more stuff. As in... Nothing. <laughs> it's just a different angle. There is one thing which I found out by watching other people play the game. Where if you go right in this corner, I just sort of push. Yeah. Let's see if I can get it to work. <clears throat> there we go. See? You can pop through. And I found that people were using that what the fuck is up with all the doors? I found that people were using that as a means of skipping the monster. So you can do that. I just never trigger the monster at the end. I honestly have no idea why the doors are all doing this. I'm going to have to go check it out after I've done this. Because that's really annoying me. And I have no idea why it's happening. Right. So right there, you'll have seen the monster like pop up in the window. That's based on a trigger that's like essentially on line with this line here. And it just pops up for a second, so the idea is you'll just like catch a glimpse out of it out the corner of your eye. We go downstairs. There is another trigger on line with this wall. 
the triggers after you come back. The door's locked. That's just to say you can't do anything. There is actually... I can't remember if I put stuff on this table. I think I intended to, but didn't in the end. Just because I didn't think it was worth it with all the stuff over here. But there's, like, more interactables over here. <coughs> they see. Right, yeah. I think it is just because of that mug. But you can, like, <coughs> throw the plates around and stuff. So there's plates and knives and forks and spoons and bowls. And also if you could just, like, mess around with over there. <coughs> just because I wanted to know how to do it is essentially the reason. There's the patio doors, which you can see that green is supposed to be <coughs> grass. It's supposed to be the garden. More things you can open that do absolutely nothing. That's actually a little bit annoying, isn't it? That's just an oversight by me. Yeah. See, I don't know why these ones are working, but the ones upstairs keep opening randomly. And this one's not doing it either. It's just specifically the ones upstairs. See, that drawer seems massive now, but at the time I made it, it looked great. The There is a mug in the sink. There are two mugs in the entire game. One of them is upstairs, one of them is there. And the hope is, is that you'll understand to put the other mug in the sink. And that's how you get one of the achievements. I like, I even modelled, like, under the sinks and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, like, there, you can see that I put the effort into making it so that those don't yeah. smash into each other like these ones do. Which I should have done up there, but just didn't think about it. <clears throat> there is a microwave and an oven, which you can also open, even though, again, does nothing. You can even open the freezer. It's a chest freezer. It's a little bit too big, so you can't actually even see inside it. <clears throat> and then here's the water. Once you touch the water, that's when the like state changes for everything. So a load of other <clears throat> stuff is based on having the water. I should really go back to bed. Right. So, when you touch that water, what happens is, is that behind me right now, there's one of the monsters outside the window. There is also, <clears throat> the lights in the living room have all changed. To sort of, like, say it's dangerous. And it also sets up all of the other triggers in the game. Right, so if I turn around, you can see them in the patio doors there. There is another trigger, again, online with the sort of like bottom of the counter, so that if you walk through, you might not catch it, and then by the time you get there, it's gone. You open this door, and it's gone red, and it's supposed to be dead spooky, and it says, don't let them hear you. So then, walk over to the door. So there's a trigger there, and it knocks on the door. You can see him right there. <clears throat> Up the stairs again. Everything's fine. <clears throat> yeah. And then you hit there and it comes through the wall. And your bedroom door closes as well. Now come on. <clears throat> Make a noise. And he catches you. <clears throat> now. It just closes there. When... I first made this game and it was like a standalone game. I think that works fine. Like, I thought that was, like, funny and interesting and whatever. As a release for Steam, I don't think it works anymore. Well, I'll just play through the game again real quick just so you can see how it's supposed to end. I'll actually show you that you can skip the trigger. There we go. I don't know why the volume doesn't work because it used to. Right, let's just see how quickly I can do this. Should be pretty quick. I can usually do it in about a minute or so. <clears throat> I mean, it does also help that, you know, I do everything. <laughs> like, I did everything, so I know where everything is. And I also, like, yeah. know the approximate ranges for should really go back to everything. Right. Like, drift around the corners. Right, let's actually skip the monster completely. So you essentially just like yeah. rub up against this wall and then clip through there. Yeah, that's one of the issues. If you don't set that trigger up, it does actually just go off straight away. And then you can do that. And that's the end cutscene. So that was what, like 30 seconds? A minute? <laughs> that is basically how the game works. So, 
besides the stuff that's broken for reasons I couldn't explain. <laughs> I'll have to look at those later. But right, besides those, I'll show you some stuff now. So just real quick, I'll show you. See, this is just a box with nothing in it. And it's just the bedroom. It's just the stuff that would be in the bedroom. But nothing else. And yeah, like I say, there's like a bit over here. I think it's in this corner. It's either in the corner there or right in front of the door. Can't quite remember where the monster will just like randomly spawn over an amount of time. This is the menu. And this is the house. So when you die, this is actually where it takes you. There's also always one of the monsters here. And it's just so dark you can't tell. When you die, it teleports you into here and it's so dark you can't tell but you're actually just in the shed so yeah garden monster this monster as well always there and he just moves into the position you want like he moves into this i think it's that little target on the floor right there he moves to there over the space of two seconds i think it's two seconds so in this view you can see that all the monsters are always there but like this one he is invisible until he's supposed to be, and this one is invisible until he's supposed to be, and like this one is invisible until he's supposed to be. Whereas the main one, this one, he's just always there because you're never going to see. Things like this cube. I can't remember what that's there for. It was it was something like I couldn't quite get in the lighting right. I realise that sounds weird, but there was a bit where um. I think it might be the very start of the... Oh yeah, that's it. It's... <laughs> it's actually two cubes. And what they do is... There's a bit in the... There's a bit in the final cutscene when you're going to sleep where you blink. You don't blink, it's two massive cubes covering your face. Because it was the, the way I worked out how to do it. Right, what else is there to show off? This is all built off my PC as it was at the time when I made this game. Since then, I've got another PC. So I've actually got two of these, one on either side of my desk. And the one on the left is my original one that this game was originally built off. And that one, I used for like storing all my old files. And the one on the right here, where the mug is now, that's the one I used to like play all my games and do everything on now. What else is there? Someone once thought this was a sink, and I was like, it's it's a bath. They thought it was a really big tap, and I'm like, no, it's a shower. Oh, I actually, I have one of these radiators in my bathroom, and I actually really don't like them. Because when you come to... If you've got a radiator, sometimes you'll need to bleed them, which is when they get air in them. And these ones get air trapped in them so frequently because of the way they're designed. Like, complete tangent, but it, it does really annoy me. Oh no, I was wrong. There is a mug on there. There's a bowl and a plate. So I did actually design power cables for like the TVs and everything, but I realised it'd be such a nightmare getting them to hang right that I just ended up not implementing them. Um, what else? Is there anything else to show? Nothing particularly. I think that's pretty much everything, really. It's it's not a very big game, is it? But I could talk a bit more about well, so, right? So let's go and look at this one, right? So these are based on I've forgotten what they're called again. So give me a second, and I'll go check. They're based on those like Japanese wooden dolls. Yeah, Kokeshi. There we go. So, basically what happened is, is that I had a nightmare. I had a nightmare. And in the nightmare, it was these dolls, like, chasing me around, and I couldn't stop myself making noises, and these were, like, chasing me. So, that was like how the nightmare went. 
and it was more soft too the nightmare like my wife was there and like we were running away from her and stuff like that and it didn't have like a particular ending or anything but it just gave me the idea and then i became like really focused on that idea And that's what eventually gave me an idea for this game. It started off as just the monsters chasing you around. And I was like, well, why? So I was like, well, it's scary if it's night time. And I was like, well, why would I be getting up in the night? And I was like, well, maybe because I'm thirsty. And that's what led to this. And there's the whole thing with, like, not being able to control your voice. Which is, like, it made me think of, like, Tourette's. And that was where the mechanic for holding the sounds in came from. Because I did some research into it, and it turns out that some people with Tourette's can sort of, like, hold it in. But when they do, it can sort of, like, all release after they stop holding it. <laughs> it's, like, like, such a weird thing, but that was where the idea came from, where you'd hold the button, and when you leave go, you're, like let all of it out and it's also why you move slower because people who have done that have reported that it takes a lot of effort and i wanted to like portray the effort that it was showing you by literally making it so that you would move slower so you move slower while focusing on not making noise because it was supposed to be like it was supposed to like show the effort you were going through to like restrain yourself it's actually one other thing, I'll just play it in here for now and see if I can get it to show. The intention with that as well is so you'll learn you'll know to not make the oh yeah, the the thing where I started just then is just an, an editor setting that I've got set up is like nothing to do with the game. So you hold the Q button yeah. and that's how you don't make noise. And it makes you move slower. I should and really go back to the bed. monster is right in front of you. And the idea was that you would see the monster and it would come at you, and then you have to slowly walk past it. And it's supposed to be scary. <laughs> that was the idea, at least. He's gone somewhere, but I don't know where. Oh, actually, no, sorry. I've got a trigger on the floor here that despawns him after you walk in the room. I shouldn't have done that. But yeah. So the idea is you'd have to slowly walk past him. <clears throat> and then go back to sleep. Now. Originally. You see how this is green. This green. Is because there's a nav mesh here. And that nav mesh ever actually gets used. The actual original idea was that the monster would actually chase you. But I couldn't get it to work. I don't know why. Because I've done it before. It's not. A particularly difficult job. But for some reason, I could not get the the enemy AI to actually work. So I actually, one of the other reasons why it's in this very limited space is because it is exact, it is exactly as wide as you are and as the monster is. So what I've got is I've got a trigger that moves it into position and then it can hear you and if it hears you all it does is move to the end of the move to the end of the corridor just moves to it and when it does that if it collides with you that's when it that's when it ends the game I can't I might be telling a lie here I think I did actually manage to get the nav mesh working, and that's how it moves towards you. But what it doesn't do is go any further than that, because I did try and have it so that it walked around like the entire top floor. I can't remember why. There was some issue with it. I realise I'm being vague on this. A lot of the other stuff I've at least been over more recently, whereas this bit in, in particular, I got working and I just never touched it again. I've also got like ideas for what I'd want to do in the future for like a horror game that's got like a similar premise. But <sighs> it's just a lot of work. So one of the things with this is that like I have a lot of 
I've talked about this before. I have a lot of ideas. But what I'm not very good at is actually, like, sticking with them. I just... I find it really hard to stay with a thing for a long time. And it's one of the reasons why I got this done, is that in its original form, the version I released on Itch originally, I only spent about six weeks on it in total. And that's how I made everything then. I've spent more time on it since then, obviously, but I think... What I really like doing is like rapid prototyping, so like making loads of little things more than one big thing. And even something like, like this is very short, but at least it's a complete thing. I find it really hard to stick with stuff, basically. But I'm I'm happy with this, and like this stuff I'd like to do. Like I, I'm now gonna have to try and fix whatever the fuck's up with those doors, because I don't know why they were doing that. Then again, I will say. I will say, no one else has mentioned to me the door's doing that before, and every now and again, it just runs weird. And it's not, I don't mean the game runs weird. I mean, something about running it in editor. Every now and again, you'll hit a bug. And it, you'll hit it, and then it'll never happen again. And it's something to do with running it in editor. Like, for some reason, in editor, controllers won't work. But if I deploy it, like, you know, launch it on Steam and everything, controllers are fine. But I can't play it on a controller in the editor to check that it works with the controller. The only reason I know is because I've had it working previously, and then for some reason now it doesn't. There's just little things like that. There's also, like, I think this will probably be the last project. Why is there a water floating outside? Oh, I think that's because this water is the one that ends up on your countertop. During that cutscene. But yeah, like, I think this will probably be the last project I ever do in Unreal Engine 4. Because after this, I'll probably move to 5 when I start my next thing. I want to do something else this year. I always want to do something else, but. The issue is, is that I have actually started a lot of games since then. Like, you've heard me talk about a few of them, but they just didn't get finished. <laughs> I find it hard to finish off. I find it really easy to plan out all of this stuff and like start making stuff. I find it really hard to see it all through to the end. One thing is just, it is just me. So, doing stuff. A lot of my ideas are like broader in scope than I can accomplish alone. But, I'd like to make more. And I mean, I will do. Just a matter of when, really. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I did also have these with, actually just before I go, I had these with a face at one point, but my wife and I decided they looked too cute. The red part was a white face and they just had like little eyes and we just decided they were too cute and not scary at all. I don't think I've got it anywhere where I'd show you. Let's just see real quick. Uh, objects. Where's monster? Monster. There we go, monster face. Um, let's see if I can get it on. I'll just stick it in here for now. Oh, it's already there. That's easier. Right. What is, see, he's just kind of cute now. <laughs> like I, I tried doing loads of stuff. I tried having it so that it would be like in a dark red and it look like the idea was oh it'll still look creepy but no he doesn't he still looks cute so we just made it like red no face thing because we thought that was more uncomfortable i still have a soft spot for the face though i think he's like it just completely changes his tone now he looks like a friendly little robot or something but it's supposed to be a spooky monster Anyway, this has gone on for a lot longer than I expected. But yeah. Oh, actually, one more thing on the whole Tourette's thing. The name is an anagram of the word Tourette's. Like, no one picked up on that. I thought someone might. I thought someone would notice, but no one ever did.
Or at least, you know, not to my knowledge. I have, at least as far as I'm aware, watched every video someone's posted on the game. A lot of them were, like, nice about it, which is good. It is very short, and it is just made by me. And I, I still do feel bad charging for it. I feel bad charging for anything. I don't really like money as a concept. <laughs> But I've said it before, like, I probably wouldn't have charged for this, except it costs money to put things on Steam, which is why I didn't charge for it when it was on itch. Of the 400 downloads I got on itch, you could donate with any of them, and I got, I got $1. And I think that's from someone who actually reviewed it for a website, and none of the other people gave me anything. Which I mean, you don't have to, but I thought I'd get more than $1. And actually, I've sold 100 or so copies on Steam. I think it's like to about 115 or so now, which is like nice. I'm happy with that. The only issue is, is that a lot of those I've sold on sale. So I've still only made $90, which still isn't enough to hit payout. So I've still not actually ever seen any money from this game. But it's not really why I make stuff, but it still would be nice. Right. I'm going to go and see if I can work out what the fuck's up with those doors. So... Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my patrons, Justin Wood, Hobbs, and Koopy Vegeta. You can join my patrons at patreon.com slash Holden Gatsby, check out my TikTok and Twitter at Holden Gatsby, and follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Holden Gatsby. Don't forget to subscribe to all of my channels. If you want more, you can watch my last video now, but if not, then thanks for sticking around. Bye.